Hey guys, my name's Nick and welcome back to the channel and in this video we are continuing our Sector Mechanicus terrain and in this one we're just going to show how I paint all the barricade parts that go on the terrain kits for all the uh, all the Sector Mechanicus terrain. Now these are fairly common parts, some of them have got sort of three, uh, what's the word to describe it, three sections to it I guess and some of them have got two um, but they're painted exactly the same way and as with my flooring uh, video, which I'll leave a link uh, in the description below and put a little card up in the corner up here somewhere, I'm sure it will appear, um, just to link that video to you. Um, these bolt onto the side of those floor panels, so it's all part of building up the terrain and doing it in one big batch paint rather than doing each box set individually where you'd end up having to put all the paints away, bring them back out, try and remember what colours you used before, which admittedly I have forgotten as I've gone through my own videos um, but uh, yeah these these bits clip onto the side provide the sort of cover uh, handrails for all those uh, frail old uh, adepts that work on these uh, refineries and so on um, and then may sort of add that extra added element of detail to the kits now these bits are really detailed it surprised me how detailed they are and as usual I've gone to town I've painted them all in and this video shows exactly how I do one of them and then at the very end of it, um, we'll see how all the other bits have uh, been done as well. So let's crack straight into the video. So the first colour I'm going to apply to this is Vallejo's Beastie Brown. Now I'm applying this exactly the same way as I applied the yellow olive on the floor panels. This is a, a clockwise and anti-clockwise rotated um, wettish brush. Not quite dry, not quite fully loaded with paint. Um, that's why that bit of tissue is on the right there just to sort of uh, get rid of the majority of the paint and then rotating clockwise and anti-clockwise with this very old um, flat headed large sort of terrain brush and that enables the the brown to get into the the panels the flat panels but without pushing it into where all the natural crevices and shaded parts would be so you can see that the black sections uh, naturally shade um, how this works you can just see that the brown just sits in nicely but also picks out the raised bits but without obliterating the model and painting the whole thing brown. Um, yeah, and as I said, exactly the same way as I did the floor panels. So uh, just with a slightly different colour. At this stage I'm not worried about all the details, all those sensor panels and everything else that are on there. Not fussed about those, just, just uh, making sure that I get this base um, wet brush um, done all over the model and then we can tidy up afterwards. The next stage then is to pretty much repeat the entire process but with Vallejo's khaki. Now this is the same highlight colour I used on the yellow olive floor panels. And what this does is, as well as sort of brightening this up to make it almost like a creamy bone kind of white colour, um, it actually ties it in with the floor panels by using a couple of similar colours. Um, but I've not quite gone with a full, full um, edge highlight or full dry brush with this. I'm applying it the same way as I've applied the brown, just slightly lighter, so that the brown does slightly show through, um, but it's more khaki than it is brown now. And again, not worrying about all the uh, all the details at this stage; uh, they can be tidied up a bit later on. Just getting the base colours down uh, for all the larger panels on the uh, the barricade, handrail, whatever you want to call this particular part of the kit. And again, very important for me, this bit kind of ties it into the floor panels and makes them not look. Um, a completely different colour, it sort of ties in nicely. Finally, just a dry brush then of bone white just to pick out all the very edges. Um, standard dry brush using my Games Workshop large dry brush. And again, coming in at from different angles just to pick out all those raised uh, bits of detail right across the top of each of the, uh, the sections. Just making sure my brush is loaded up, I think it was a little bit light on the colour there. Um, but yeah, just uh, coming at it, as I said, from different angles, just to pick out just those very uh, tips of details uh, and not change the, the colour from the khaki brown colour. The next section then is to start painting in the details. Now to keep it concurrent with all the other terrain and all the Promethean relay pipes and uh, thermic plasma conduits and everything else that I'm painting, um, I'm trying to keep the palette vaguely similar. So all the hoses and cabling are all going to be very similar so that they all tie in quite nicely. So here we're just going to go with these armoured cabling sections over with the brassy brass um, and you might guess if you've seen any of the other videos we'll go over that with Agrax Earthshade a bit later on. 
Um, but yeah, just now start blocking in all of the details uh, and making the uh, bits of detail come to life on this model. Um, so yeah, this is just filling in the the. Arm. You can pick out as much or as little of the detail as you want on this. Um, I'm painting in this sort of fan extractor thing, uh, maybe a cooling fan or whatever it's going to be. Um, just painting that into brass as well, both front and back, and then I'll paint the other bits in different colours. But it's just um, just to pick out some detail and give it a little bit of uh, wow factor and a bit of oomph rather than being sort of plain uh, and boring. Now as with the uh, floor panels you can of course just leave it entirely dry brushed and just not worry about it because it is just a piece of terrain and not one of your prized 40k models. But for me I like to make sure that my, my toy soldiers are as best painted as I can do on terrain as best I can do. So uh, we move in exactly the same as we did with the previous uh, video with the floor panels. All well, the cabling now, because cabling needs to be red, it's very important that cables are red. Uh, highlights to all the uh, thick members of the 40k world that you do not cut red cables. I'm trying to be as deep, as careful as I can, but obviously uh, uh, managed to manage to blob a little bit of red onto the model there, but soon removed with a bit of wet tissue, and then we can crack straight on. So I'm painting the big red cables along the bottom just inside the brass ones there and then there's some final cables that run up to sort of the sensors or display panels or whatever they are uh, on each of the uh, panels here. So that's the last of the detail here then just getting those last two cables in and then that covers where all the red sections are going to be. Uh, and then we can move on to the next colour. The next part then is to use some black and get that uh, Mechanicum symbol done and as everyone knows that's half black and half white um, with an alternating part on the skull and the cogwheel that's behind it so just painting in half of that skull in black just here and then we move on and just paint the, uh, the cogwheel on the outside just in black as well. Now what I'm also going to do is, uh, is paint the sensor panels themselves in black on the reverse. That just gives it a bit more contrast and uh, makes the screens themselves pop when we go on to painting those next. So uh, yeah, just finishing off the last bits of black, just uh, being really, really careful that you're not going to bleed the black onto any of the work that you've done already. Um, so we can now paint the remainder, the other half of that Mechanicum symbol, and we're just going to use some dead white from Vallejo, uh, Games Workshop white, any other, um, any white will do, just painting that in. So it's the other half of the skull on this bit and then the other half of the cog on the other side. Just being really careful not to hit the black, um, leaving the eye um, in black already or that shaded colour. Then just picking out that other half of the cog that we can see on the screen now. Um, just again, just being super careful not to get white on anything else, otherwise it will sort of make a problem for tidying up. Um, but yeah, did a reasonable job of that. The next bit then is just to fill in the display panels in white. Now that's just to give a good base colour for the lens screen colour that I'm going to go with, which is a green. Um, just painting that in white just makes that green a little bit more vibrant when it comes through over the top of it. So again, just being as careful as possible um, not to get that on any of the black, but because it's a white colour and black goes over white quite nicely, uh, any mistakes that you do make at this stage you can easily just touch up with that bit of black. Uh, as you can see I have made a little bit of a, uh, a mess of that white on the bigger panel um, but not really a problem. Also painting in the buttons on the control panel there just to uh, make those pop out a little bit. Uh, and then finally uh, Agrax Earthshade, always a good colour for shading. I'm just going to paint this over all the red parts and all the brass parts and that just gives it a little bit of depth and uh, makes that colour pop a little bit more. So just uh, slather that all over the red and the brass. Nice and simple. There's also some kind of identification plate um, just on there that I've painted in red and I've gone over with that Agrax Earthshade as well. It's sort of got a, um, a weird number or sort of a identification panel, I guess, just to sort of say what part of a uh, an STC template or whatever this particular panel comes out of just gives it a little bit more a um, little bit more flavor on the terrain as I said just painting in these uh, these panels uh, in green these sensor panels in uh, a sick green here um, 
that did take a couple of coats just to make that flesh out quite nicely and give it a good depth of colour. I then went over that and put some lines of white on to look like text and then gloss varnish. Now on the screen now, several hours later, you can see that I've painted in all the other sections that all look exactly the same from the uh, from the terrain kits, from the Sector Mechanicus terrain kits. As you can see, there's all kinds of detail all over these, from all the different sensor panels to uh, temperature control panels to um, fire extinguishers on the back of a couple of them, which I thought was quite a cool detail. Uh, fans and door sections as well. So I've painted those actually in silver or in black and then dry brushed with the silver rather than anything else. But the two edge sides, as you can see, are in exactly the same uh, style with the brown khaki and bone white dry brush over the top. And there we go, that is all the side panels from all the terrain, all the handrails, whatever you want to call these bits, that clip onto the floor panels all complete. So there we go then guys, that's going to wrap this video up on the uh, second part of my uh, Sector Mechanicus terrain building and painting process. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I shall catch you guys on the next video. Cheers.